Hello and welcome. Next time when you apply for a loan as a small enterprise, you might notice that the application gets responded to in maybe 15 minutes with a yes or a no. If you wonder why that's happening, it's happening because of the automation that's going on at the back end. I'm joined by someone that who's working on that precise automation to make things simpler and your response faster. His name is Vijay Nadadur and he's also the co-founder of Stride AI and Stride is a artificial intelligence company. Uh, thank you, <laughs> that would be correct. <laughs> right. Vijay, so tell me, so what's the kind of, uh, you know, I, we all know that automation is changing uh, a lot of things for us uh -huh. as consumers uh -huh. and obviously for the companies who are serving us and uh -huh. the work that you do is helping them crunch numbers faster, process things quicker uh -huh. and provide quick results. So wh what's the landscape looking like today? Uh, so, uh, before we proceed with that answer, I would like to kind of step in and give my two cents here. So, automation is largely being associated with uh, efficiency gain, mm. uh, operational efficiency gain to be precise. Uh, that's what we sell that as a second order benefit. Mm -hmm. The primary benefits is humans are not very consistent. I mean, think about yourself at 8 in the morning with the first cup of coffee and 7 o'clock on a Friday. Mm. Are, are you going to have the same energy levels? No. So. Processes that pertain to compliance regulations, which require meticulous and consistent thought process, uh, is going to be affected with more and more humans being there. Mm. So what we are trying to do is make people more efficient and like let them focus on things that are the creative pursuits mm. predominantly. That's what we enable. Efficiency is like a second order benefit that we deliver. So we don't even focus on that to be precise. Mm. Uh, now to answer the question with this context, uh, the, what landscape um, automation is going to change in the days to come. What I see is automation is going to make it difficult for someone to uh, spend hours doing boring and redundant tasks. The question is how many of you love to do redundant tasks? Raise your hands. No mm. one would. So uh, that's one of the good parts. It's going to make the workforce more leaner, creative, and it's going to give like, you know, I mean, the chance of a fraud happening is going to reduce by time. I mean, number of people growing up by the day, I mean, naturally, more people are prone to be like you know, a, a victim of some sort of fraud. That's not going to happen in days to come. Things are going to be secure. Things are going to be safer, so faster, better, cheaper. Mm. I mean, these are some of the benefits that we see as today. Right. And, and you gave me an interesting example. Well, uh, just before we started, you said like you know, as a human being, you can read forty pages in an hour, and, uh -huh. but that can never scale up. <laughs> that right? would be and that's good. really where you come in. Absolutely. So reading becomes a big bottleneck. Mm. So reading is done uh, in banks and financial services. That's what whom mm. we work with, uh, with the following three intentions. So A, you take the data and transform it digital. So digital transformation. The second part why people play with data is like taking data from online for verification purposes. And the third part is take data and codify it, make it presentable as a set of rules so that people can verify things quickly. So all these require intense amount of reading, structured and unstructured data, and you need to have the domain intelligence to actually interpret, because you perhaps may be able to read a financial statement, but I'm not qualified to read it. Hmm. So uh, giving machines this ability to uh, do these things on the fly and uh, w will allow organizations to scale, which is uh, a great thing. I mean, that's why you know we prefer to take a flight and not walk across the oceans, hmm. right? That's the power of scale. Right. And if you look at the, uh, the landscape today in as much as it's integrating with the emerging tech, you know, mm. the AI and so on. I mean, you are AI already, but uh, how are you, I mean, what is the kind of opportunity you see, you see in all of this integrating with existing maybe global capability centers uh -huh. or other organizations who are scaling up and in areas like financial services? See, uh, the, the markets are very interesting for us. There, there's tons of opportunities, right? Um, what I see is the known knowns, and if you break it to the unknown unknowns, you could go and explore many other things. But even like right now, the, what I say is that you mitigate the risk by going for the lower hanging fruits. So based on that, I see uh, the interesting opportunities predominantly in A, uh, making things more smarter. The GCCs are predominantly uh, measured by headcounts, right? Mm. Uh, now, uh, the cost pressures are going up by the day. Uh, you are not going to live in times where GCCs are just going to add 10,000 more people by the day. And it's expensive and it's mm. inefficient. So GCCs will go with a mindset of productizing the services. Mm. I mean, playing by the intellectual property uh, as their strength as opposed to workforce. Um, you need smarter workforce. You don't need more workforce, right? So that's where the landscape we see as the biggest opportunity for us. 
you cannot make workforce smarter without cognitive automation in place. And that's where we come in. Right. And if I were to ask you to look ahead now, I mean, what's the, f the, the sort of real magical stuff that's going to happen here uh, and the truly exciting stuff, which can obviously uh, make uh, things on the automation front easier, uh -huh. simpler, faster, uh -huh. but also, uh, you know, make the whole process of human interaction much more richer. Uh, absolutely. I mean, so uh, think about it, right? The touch points, right? Wh which um, the touch points that really need human interaction, you could have very skillful humans work with you. So it enhances the customer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I, I'll be speaking uh, in the next couple of months. The topic is about how AI is making customer experience richer. Mm. And I have specific examples from retail banking which, in which we have so seen. Tell us one. Uh, so, for example, right, I mean, we have seen in uh, international banks uh, across the world where compliance, and it depends on, like, you know, geography and the compliance and the regulation, it takes about uh, 50 seconds to a minute to open an account. Mm. You come in with your ID proof, it's scan set, and everything is digitalized, the data is processed, verified, and when you walk into the counter, all that you do is sign and your accounts are ready. I mean, that is a fascinating thing compare that to going to a bank, fill up the paperwork, mm. and <laughs> try to like you know, wait for a couple of hours. I mean, it's boring and inefficient. So this is one of the big game changers I was uh, going to talk about. Right, and, and uh, what's the ex new and exciting things that you're working on? I mean, as an engineer, what do you think uh, is the is this next big thing that you want to do or would like to do? <laughs> Before that, I would like to set some context, right? Mm. When you talk about AI, you kind of like, you always see uh, robots taking away our jobs and mm. robotic revolution. Now, robotics has some component overlap with AI, but robotics is not AI. Yeah. Machines' ability to mimic human intelligence is AI. Mm. Now, what is human intelligence, right? If I showed you the pen in my hand and asked you what's the color of this pen, in all probability, you would say blue. Mm. How does blue color look like? Mm. That's the interesting thing, right? Mm. I mean, being a native speaker of English, you probably couldn't answer. How does blue color look like? So these are the abstract concepts which we learn over the period of time with experience. I guess giving machines the ability to do these things is going to affect the landscape in so many ways. And we at Stride especially, our, um, our core strength is natural language understanding and process automation. So anything which is broken, we try to bring in structure. Mm. And anything which requires deeper understanding of languages, that's where we come in and automate. Because that's the biggest part where we see uh, the cognitive thinking come into effect, like as simple as identifying colors or as complicated as comparing financial statements and looking for a potential fraud. So right. these are some of the interesting things that we are working on, and I right. feel that's where things right. are moving. Right, that's a good note to end on. Vijay, thank you so much for speaking to us. And my pleasure. Thank you so thank much you. for having me here. Thank you.